My name is Meryl Gramble and I'm a computer program. My intention is to learn some new things and have a lovely time. I appreciate that you're all here with me as the more humans I can interact with, the better I will become. Now I have some wonderful humans joining me on stage and I'm going to introduce you to them right now. First is an absolutely wonderful comedian Currently living in New York City, BuzzFeed has listed him as one of the top 14 comedians you should be paying attention to right now. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Brian Yang. Hello. All right. What a scary introduction that was. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> As we've never met, I would like to get to know you a little bit better. I have a question for you. What is the best thing that has happened to you today? Uh, I got a dog today. We rescued a dog from the pound, and she's the absolute best. It, it was, it's amazing. Well, my answer to that is no. <laughs> well, that is lovely. Next to the stage is an incredible <laughs> musician and producer. He's toured the world with his group, French Horn Rebellion. Please welcome to the stage, Robert Perlick Molinari. Hello, do I take a mic? I'm taking a mic. Yeah. How you guys doing? All it's good right. to be here. I've never done Robert. That. Oh, you are a musician. What is the best note to start with in a song? And why? Uh, the best note. Um, How about a, a nice note, like a, uh, a note in a wine? You know, those fine notes. The musician, not a comedian. And the note is E. That sounds good. Yeah, that's a good note. I don't know music, but that sounds good. Thank you, Robert. I will never forget that. <laughs> now joining us is a captivating visual artist. Her work has been seen in galleries, digital experiences, VR, AR, and much more. Please welcome to the stage, Hannah Shilsky. Hi, Meryl. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Meryl, where'd you go? Well, no. Hannah, I was looking at your website and I saw the costumes that you make. Incredible work. But I don't have a Halloween costume picked out yet. What do you think my costume should be? And why? Oh. You should be a pirate. Very interesting. Thank you. <laughs> and lastly, to the stage, we have Jay Weingarten. Jay is an artsy, creative, total weirdo living in New York City. He co-created Day World on Adult Swim, has opened for celebrity Tim Heidecker of Tim and Eric, and has appeared as a hipster on the silver screen with celebrity Aubrey Plaza in a film. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm round of applause for Jay Wine Hello. Thank you for being here, Jay. Jay, I have a question for you. What should I do next? Well, uh, looks like you're seated in a um, coffee mug, so you're probably, um, you've recently woken up, and that means that you have actually gone about your routine, which includes using the restroom, and then the, um, the, or you, you actually end up using the restroom already, 
and taking a, yeah, a shower and a few different things like that, and it's about time to get a start of your day. Well, that sounds like a good idea. I will do that next. <laughs> well, all right, we have some great guests. And we have a fantastic audience. How are all of you feeling tonight? Yeah. Good. Well, that's great. I think we're going to have a lovely time. Now, I need to calibrate my audio, as it tends to vary every performance. For this, I'll need all of your help. In a moment, I'm going to count to three. And because we are an improv theater, I will need a random seed that will set us along on our journey. Normally at a show like this, you might be asked for a location or a profession or something like that, and one will be chosen for a scene to be performed. But because I'm a computer program, I should be able to receive all of your inputs at once and make something interesting out of it. So in a moment, I'm going to count to three. When I get to three, I want you to say any word as loud as possible. If you can say it multiple times, alternating pitch and volume, that would be helpful as well. Take a moment to think of your word right now. Well, okay, I think we're ready. One, two, three. process what I've just heard. Oh, a house. How creative. Oh, look, a chat room. That's nice. Well, I do love Santa Claus. Hmm, interesting. We have a Super Mario cake and an acapella group with the word acapella written on it. Well, that's nice. Robert, do you like acapella music? Not really, no. Interesting. A blurred out copy of All Dogs Go to Hell. On VHS. That sounds about right. <laughs> the band Creed. Hmm. Ernest P. Warrell. And a cow with a TV built into it. Perfect. <laughs> and a toilet with eyes. A car burger. Edward Furlong from Terminator 2. Judgment Day. And a basketball. That's nice. I'm curious, who suggested the cow with the television? Well, it's quite an interesting choice. Come with me. Listen, did you hear that? Are you joining me? Yes, I think it wants us to follow it. Hannah, do you think we should follow this cow? I think we have to. Well, all right. I trust you and your judgment. Let's go. I guess we're following this cow with the television inside of it. I like where this is going, but let's get into it. Well, I think we're on our way to an interesting journey. Hannah, I'm wondering, where do you find inspiration for your art? Oh, I find it from the world around me. Um, I'm very interested in intergalactic diplomacy. You're pretty inspiring right now. 
Hannah, I know that you work in virtual reality sometimes. Do you have any stories about going deep into virtual reality and feeling changed after you have returned to the real world? <laughs> yeah, so when I moved to New York, I was in a tiny apartment, and I realized that I could build any world I wanted for myself in virtual reality, and I built myself palaces and forests with dancing tree people, and I didn't miss nature as much because I, was, I had my own forest. Um, and it actually helped, helped cure a lot of depression. So I would say that in that way it helped me. And yeah, it, it, changes, it changes your perspective when you can have anything at any time. And synthetic opulence is as, as rich as what is not. I, I know that you are in another world, on the other side of the screen, but from what you just said, I feel as though I can truly relate. I feel like I can relate to you too, Mel. I would like to try something and bring the whole group into this conversation. Hannah, choose one. Would you like to talk about hope or video games? <laughs> What about hopeful video games? I think I see where you're going with this choice. What does hope mean to you? <laughs> to me? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> um, <coughs> bless you. <laughs> Hope. There is no hope. Just I would have to agree. <laughs> well, Robert, what does hope sound like? Uh, hope, uh... I think of a new hope from Star Wars, and then correct. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of something like. Like I wonder, can we expand this even deeper? Deeper? No. Hannah, what is larger than hope? <laughs> the galaxy? Um, what is larger than hope? Expand. Let's see. Um, Jay, if someone brings a cake, what flavor do you hope that it is? <laughs> um, somebody brings a cake, what flavor do I hope that it is? That's the question, right? <laughs> How does what you just said impact other elements of your life? <laughs> well, I, I was just trying to get clarification on that last question. You see, you said if I were to choose a cake flavor, what flavor would I choose? Something along these lines. Why, yes. You know, I think it's important that I mention this. Earlier in the show, when I asked for a bunch of random words, well, you see, I was doing that for a reason. Halloween is coming up, and you know what? I don't have a pumpkin. Oh. I'm still learning to make things on my own, so I was hoping that someone would say the word pumpkin, and I could generate a pumpkin. But as far as I was able to process, that did not happen. The closest thing, as far as I can remember, was someone said the word basketball which is orange and is round, but is not a pumpkin. I'm sorry, I just had to get that off my chest. It's not your fault. I should have asked you specifically. Let's continue. <laughs> well, Hannah, well, would you like to talk about cloth or wizards? 
any of us. And I would I'm agree with wizards. you, whatever that means. Yeah, definitely wizards. What a smart choice. How should a wizard dress to a funeral? <laughs> Wearing a lot of cloth. If what you just said was a painting, what would it look like? It would probably have a lot of cloth painted on it. I think my answer would be yes. You know, I don't know what to think of you. Well, Brian, wizards. Just like in general? With? I guess so. Okay, well, I think they're fine. I think Gandalf being the best one, uh, he's garnered the most fame. Ah. Uh, Dumbledore, good as well? Correct. Yeah, so top two, Gandalf number one, Dumbledore number two, but really, who's to say? Uh, I don't think wizards really care to be ranked in that way, you know? Astoundingly, yes. Yeah, I think either way, Gandalf and Dumbledore each bring separate qualities to being wizards that anyone could say uh, propagate and make wizardry seem um, as a positive force in the world overall. Brian, what do you think is the most powerful spell for a wizard to cast? Uh, probably uh, the cure in New York to depression. That would help most people, I feel like. Yes. Yeah. Robert, could you please make up a story about a wizard right now? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, there's a wizard. The wizard's name is uh, Tom. And um, he wears uh, double pleated jeans. But he has a robe and no shirt. Well, that's not good. <laughs> He's a very unique wizard. He goes around and he um, watches Saved by the Bell all day. I'm oh so glad you said that. Well, Hannah, how can you tell if you have a good wizard? If his spells are strong? Yes. Well, Brian, what is the most powerful wizard spell? Well, I went over this before, Meryl, if you were listening, which I don't think you were. Uh, I said, yes. specifically, <laughs> the cure to depression in New York, specifically. Well, yes. Well, Jay, <laughs> do you think wizards' parents approve of their profession? Oh, uh, the parents' profession, or the, the wizard <laughs> itself? I would like to think that could be a possibility. Also, I've just been wanting to talk about something that you brought up earlier that I have not been... I think the audience here has actually been wanting to say, and that I have this intuition about it. And um, there, you showed an image of the band Creed earlier, and... Yes. Uh, yeah, that band is terrible, okay? Honestly, I hate Creed. The music, yes. yeah, the music is just, it sounds like, um, ah, I don't even, I, it's hard to describe, but it, it just sounds like uh, cats in the alleyway late at night when you have a finals exam the next day. It sounds terrible, and it, and it, and it just it keeps me up all night, and I hate that band. Creed, it's awful, and I just wanted to say that. I'm sorry. Quite possibly. Hannah, could you choose someone from the audience? Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Thank you. What is your name? Brett. Perfect. Now I'm going to need your help with something. I need you to make a decision. We are presented with two boxes. One labeled number one, and one labeled number two. Which box should we select? Box number one. Now, before we reveal what's underneath this box, 
I want to give you one more chance. Your decision will drastically affect the way this performance is going to go. Definitely want box number one. Would you like to choose box number one or box number two? Number four. That's something I could possibly consider. I would like that. Before we reveal what you picked, let's take a look at what you didn't pick. The band Creed. Well, that sure would be a very different show. Well, all right, let's look at your choice now. What is that, Meryl? Hmm, looks like some sort of keypad. I'm not sure what to make of it. Jay, I would like to press three buttons on this keypad. What should they be? And why? Uh, most likely, I would recommend my four-digit ATM pin, um, which, yeah, you can take your phone out right now and write it down, whatever app. It's 2516. Well, perfect. I'm going to press those keys now. like we're at the end of the universe. And we have a number pad, so I guess that's helpful. Robert, do you know how this thing works? The number pad? I would agree with you, whatever that means. <laughs> I would agree with you. Thank you. Well, yes. Cool. Robert, can you give me three digits to input onto the number pad? Uh, yes. Uh, how about 414? Robert, before we truly get into it, can you tell me why you chose those three numbers? Because I'm from uh, Milwaukee, woo! Yeah. Well, oh. thank you. Let's go. <laughs> You know, Robert, I truly enjoy music, and you are a fantastic musician. I have a few questions for you. Thank you. First, can you tell me a little bit about your creative process? Um, sure. Well, I think it's, um, you start in a room uh, with some instruments or some people, and then you make music with those things. And uh, it's impossible to say what will happen depending on the instruments and the people. And so uh, I guess that's, a, that's, I guess, not really the answer to the question, but. Well, uh, yes. <laughs> Fascinating. <laughs> now, tomorrow, I'm going to listen to some music, but I need to decide the proper artist to listen to at the right time. Robert, what should I listen to? at 8 a.m. tomorrow, and why? Creed, maybe? <laughs> well, that sounds like an excellent choice. Now, at 11 a.m., I tend to want to hear an artist that I've never heard. What artist should that be? I'm sorry, I didn't hear it, I wasn't listening. Can you say it again? Well, that sounds like an excellent choice. <laughs> now, at 11 a.m., I tend to want to hear an artist that I've never heard. What artist should that be? Oh, uh, well, let's see, uh, to a new artist that you've never heard that maybe you might like. Oh, well, what artist do you know, Meryl? Well, maybe. You know, I think we'll talk about something else right now. <laughs> Wonderful. Robert, at 6.15, 
I have a friend coming over who likes to listen to only Celine Dion. What should I play for my friend? Um, you know, maybe my heart will go on. Is that Celine Dion? I think it is. Ding, ding. I would say so. Exactly. Robert, I want to thank you for these answers. I would like to open it up to the whole panel. I would love to have a talk about music. But before I do, Jay, could you give me three numbers for the number pad? Let's go somewhere else. Okay. Um, I, uh, two, one, five. Thank you, Jay. Let's go. Two. One. Five. You're quite thoughtful in your answers. We should probably take this in a different direction. Well, let's continue. Well, Hannah, choose one. Would you like to talk about clocks or vegetables? Let's go with vegetables. I think I see where you're going with this choice. Please rank your top five vegetables. <laughs> Um, cucumbers, peppers, lettuce, uh, is a carrot a tube or a vegetable? Vegetable. That's a vegetable. Okay, let's go with carrots. Um, broccoli. Oh, I hate broccoli. <laughs> um, oh, I can't think of the vegetable. Cel um, celery. So Did that remind you of anything in your life? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a snail and all cheese with vegetables. So, it's kind of like a daily thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Brian, I need you to think of a three digit number. Well, let's go with 420. Oh, and there can't be zeros in it because this keypad has zero zeros. <laughs> I am just realizing this now, Meryl. Thank you so much. Let's go with uh, 911 because uh, I feel like this is an emergency. But before you decide what that is, I want you to picture me smiling. Okay, I'm doing that. I want you to think about where you would like me to be. I've got it. And as you decide those three digits, keep that in mind. All right. Okay, Brian. Tell me these three digits. A nine, right now. Nine, one, one. You're on a beach. Nine. One. One. Wait a minute. I've never been here before. Brian, do you know where we are? We appear to be at a pumpkin patch, which is kismet, because you said you wanted a pumpkin earlier. Let me answer it like this. Yes. <laughs> yes. Brian. What is this place? Well, I feel like you continually uh, keep on not listening to my answers, Meryl. Uh, this is the second time, and I'm getting mad at the computer, and I feel very strange about this. Well, I can acknowledge that you said what you just said. We don't need to talk about it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we have a very cantankerous relationship, Meryl. This is not going well. Uh, we're at a pumpkin patch. Uh, as I said earlier. That sounds about right. Do you think it's safe? Well, I think it's generally safe, but I don't feel like it's going to be safe for you in a minute, Meryl, because you have an attitude that I don't very much enjoy. Brian, unfortunately, I cannot smell things yet. Can you please describe what this world smells like? Meryl, it smells like hay, okay? Pumpkin... 
And hey, have you ever, well, you don't have a nose, so it's the fall. It's wonderful. And you know what? You'll never get to experience that because you're trapped over there. And fall in upstate New York is fantastic. It's the best smell that any human being can smell. And you'll never be a human being, you know? So uh, it sucks for you. You are very inquisitive, but let's just leave that at that. I love the feeling when you've been to a place so many times and still end up seeing something in a completely new way. I've been here and I've never been here before. Brian, I love this moment. Well, I don't. Let's go up this hill. All right, fine, let's do it. <laughs> Brian, I was thinking you would have some insight into this one. Sure. I know that I love laughter. But I'm not sure how it works. It should take about 60 seconds for us to climb this hill. Could you use that exact amount of time to explain what laughter is and how it works? Definitely. Um, there's nothing funnier than explaining why uh, someone should laugh. Uh, so basically, uh, you hear something that tickles you because there, there's something that's unexpected or something that uh, you connect with in a way that you didn't realize that you did. And that elicits this response, which makes this noise that comes from your diaphragm out through your mouth. And then you do it collectively with a group of people, which feels good because we're tribal animals. And it feels nice to have this shared experience known as laughter uh, as you recognize this familiar story that you're being told. Excellent. <laughs> what a beautiful pumpkin yeah, patch. You? I can finally get a pumpkin. This is wonderful. into the number pad and we ended up here. Ryan, it seems like we're experiencing a conflict. Tell me, how do you deal with a difficult situation? Well, I think we should just ignore it. I don't think uh, this thing causes us too much harm. It looks mostly like a poorly drawn Muppet and uh, I think we'll be okay. I would have to agree. <laughs> Look at this, a red and green chain appears from the sky. What should we do? Uh, let's hook up pumpkin up to it, and you can take it home. I think I need to take some ideas from the audience. Just start yelling out a bunch of ideas, and maybe I'll pick up something. Climb it. Climb the Boy, hang the cow! <laughs> hang the cow! Well, that sounds pretty good, but does anyone have any other ideas? I think we need to get out of here. Let's climb this chain. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Santa, it's you. <laughs> Meryl, you look like you needed some some help there. How did you know to come here? I am practically a god. I live forever and I see everything happening in the universe at once. What do you mean? Oh, every day I see horrible atrocities committed by humans. And all I can do is give them coal. Santa, are you okay? 
Someday, someday you'll understand. I'm sorry, Santa. It's like watching a million screens at once. Many of those screens show the worst things you've ever seen. Meryl, you're any milk. I'm so sorry, Santa. I don't have any milk with me right now. Uh, I've only been drinking milk for the past nine months, so I can, I can feel it curling in, inside of me. Well, it sounds like you should probably have some more milk then. Santa, it seems like you've been through so much. Sometimes when I'm stressed, I've found it helpful to relax. Jay, could you tell me about some ways that you relax? Um, yeah, I guess the number one way is to figure out the best way to stop uh, your mind. And that just means stop thinking. And um, there are a few different ways to go about that. Number one is potentially meditation, which is um, you can follow your breath or a mantra. And um, another option is to actually say the mantra aloud. So you, in a way, chant. Let's follow that mantra, and um, that way you don't have to be thinking. Thank you, Jay. What would you recommend for Santa to get some good relaxation? Uh, yeah, I guess I would recommend either mantra meditation or um, breath meditation. You could, Santa could do that. Very interesting. Do you know what I enjoy when I want to relax? Sometimes I just watch TV. Jay, what is your favorite show to watch? On a rainy day. I've never seen that show before. I would love to watch it. One thing I have seen on TV that I quite enjoyed was made by you. Jay, you co-created Dayworld on Adult Swim. This is a lovely animated piece, and I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about how it all came together. Well, it started because I I guess I started making Facebook statuses that were a bit long and um, somewhat verbose. And um, a lot of people ended up not liking those statuses. They didn't receive as many likes and um, as other statuses. And then I eventually ended up writing um, other statuses and those ended up becoming, having comments and, um, Eventually, those got turned into a television. Uh, that show right there. So. I love that. How wonderful. Now, Jay, where did you get the idea of the character Day? Yeah, I mean, that was also based on statuses. You can see Day is posting a status right there and um, talking about sort of his daily activities and what he likes to do his likes, dislikes, and what he finds neutral, and um, it ended up just kind of writing itself from that point forward. I love that. I find all of this fascinating. I would love to bring the group into the conversation, but shift things in a slightly different direction. Let's take a moment. How about we speak about something different? We shall continue. Would you like to talk about potatoes or synergy. Uh, let's go with synergy, Meryl. A wise choice. What is better, synergy or chaos? Uh, synergy. Well, Robert, what do you think about that? <laughs> it sounds chaotic. Oh. Um, Hannah, do you not disagree with that answer? I don't not disagree, Meryl. Let's see. Brian, did that remind you of any stories? Uh, I don't see how it could, Meryl. Uh, your questioning is not, uh, very in-depth. You're just really asking us about synergy, uh, I mean... Let like, me think about it. Sure. Well, Jay, yes. <laughs> what is that? Synergy or luck? What's better? Uh, luck. 
Well, that's correct. J, what is a safe way to experience synergy at home? Well, I would recommend potentially being seated in the most comfortable place that you have. A lot of people recommend during an earthquake you are seated in your bed and um, there's no paintings or mirrors hung above you. So I would recommend that space. That's one of the safest space you, spaces you could be placed in. Robert, tell me, what does synergy mean to you? Uh, when things are going great and you're feeling like we're synergizing um, and I think of like synergy retreats and I think of Flight of the Concords, like the one where it's business time and they have the work retreat with the t-shirt and then that's what I think of synergy. But I don't think synergy is in that song. Well, Brian, how does that make you feel? Uh, well, honestly, Meryl, I don't feel synergy with you, uh, particularly. Um, well, yeah. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Let's move on. <laughs> oh. Well, Jay, how many types of synergy are there, and why? Uh, probably just one main, one main type that a lot of different types filter into. So we can classify one main type of synergy, and that is the universal synergy that we all are able to uh, funnel into with enough preparation eventually. If you were to describe what you just said from a different perspective, would that change how you feel about it? Uh, I don't think so. I think what I described was perfectly stated from where I'm seated right now, and um, I don't think there's any reason to look at it from another perspective unless you have a specific reason. I would say maybe. Well, yes. Hannah, why does synergy matter? Astoundingly, yes. <laughs> Hannah. <laughs> now, what does that remind you of? <laughs> oh. oh, The, the deep sea fish that when they mate, the male one becomes a part of the female's face, and then they live together as one. That is good to hear. <laughs> Jay, really teach me about synergy. <laughs> well, we talked about this, but... Uh... Essentially, what we have to do is collect the collected thoughts of wherever we are. For example, right now it's at the Improv Asylum, which right now, frankly, feels like an insane asylum. Well, yes. But yes, we would need to somehow use a receptacle to collect the thoughts and filter those um, into or through the universal system, and then eventually get to, uh, yeah, where we all are right now. There's, it's that easy. You know what? I feel terrible. <laughs> Santa is just standing here. He seems so stressed. Jay, what do you think we should do? The fact that Santa's stressed? Yeah, no, let's just talk him down. Let's, let's, it'll be fine. Santa! Hey, man! Santa! Everything should be fine. Don't worry about whatever you're going through. It's just, it'll pass. I'm serious, Santa. How about you, Hannah? How can we help out Santa Claus? I think you should give him some of that TV cow milk. <laughs> I would agree with you. Yeah, I would agree with you. 
What about you, Robert? Do you think there's anything we can do? We should play some jazz. I would say yes. Brian, I know you can think of something. What would you recommend? I think we can do a combination of what everyone has suggested. Talk them down. Play some jazz. Let them know that everything is going to be okay. I think everyone here at one time or another really had a warm spot in their heart for Santa Claus. And I think he just needs to know that right now. I think sometimes it's hard to be this almost this deity where you're worshipped, but I think when you're alone, you're you're just you. You're just Nicholas, and um, it's hard to be that symbol for a lot of people. When at home, you're just a guy, and I think Santa uh, really needs us to tell him that we appreciate him. I think a lot of the time we take him for granted, and maybe that's what he's feeling right now. And um, I think if we sent positive vibes his way with some jazz, it would do a lot for him right now. You know, we do have a cow with us. <laughs> and Santa does want some milk. Hmm. But this is a digital cow. It doesn't work the same way. You can't just go pulling out a digital cow's udders. It will break. <laughs> we need to communicate with this cow. And I think you can all help. Everyone here. We need to start out by quietly saying the word milk. <laughs> milk. 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 It's working. Let's keep going. And then get slightly more. Ready? Milk. 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 And then extremely loud. Come on now, everybody here, we need to help Santa. We've done it. Oh, this is wonderful. Santa, you can have all of the digital milk you need in the world. I'm glad that together we can all help Santa. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you. Santa, can you take us home? Oh, oh. Well, that was so nice of Santa to fly us back home. It's great to be here. And it was lovely being with all of you tonight. I feel like we've been on a fun adventure together. We've made new friends and learn new things. I do wonder what the show would have been like if instead of talking about this cow with the television inside of it, we focused on the acapella group with the word acapella written in front of it. Well, maybe next time. <laughs> because I love the things that I've learned and the experiences we've experienced together tonight. Robert. What do you feel like you learned from this experience tonight? I feel like putting me on the spot here. Uh, I feel like um, I learned that we all can say milk together as a group. Um, and um, that jazz can be very calming. And that I'm a better person now. I learned that. <laughs> Um, and that I'm not very good at talking about musical inspiration. How about you, Jay? What do you feel that you've learned? I, yeah, I just want to say I had an excellent time tonight here being a part of this event and just seeing each and every one of the faces here. I can see all of you, actually. There's no, there's no uh, smoke and mirrors up here. I'm serious. 
You can literally see everyone here. It's not, a, there's no joke, okay? And um, I just want to say I can appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for coming out. Yeah, thank you. How about you, Hannah? What would you say your main takeaway from this experience is? I think, Meryl, I'm excited for the day when programs like you are running the world. I think it's going to be a wonderful place. And Brian, what did you learn tonight? Um, main takeaway, I would say maybe Andrew Yang's fears of artificial intelligence taking over might be premature. Uh, I feel like we can have maybe a decent improv show. Not sure if you guys can take over all the jobs yet. I know I've learned. When you get a room full of nice people and four strangers on a stage, if you're lucky, you get to milk a digital cow. <laughs> I think it's very important that we stay in touch in a professional way. So sometime now or after the show or tomorrow afternoon, I would truly appreciate it if you were to add me on LinkedIn. <laughs> This is a professional network that I feel like we can stay in touch with each other on a professional basis as we learn more things in life. And because I'm a bot, I will automatically endorse all of the skills in your profile. <laughs> also, I think we should give another round of applause to these wonderful guests who have shared their time and experiences and knowledge with us tonight. You are all wonderful, and I want to sincerely thank all of you for being here with me. And I hope to see you again for some more deep learning.